now for it to be available anytime, anywhere for everyone. What do you think, Steve? I think companies today are not what they were a couple of years ago. We're no longer existing only inside our firewalls. We're expanding and extending to provide digital services and capabilities to external entities. Customers, partners, vendors, suppliers, they're all considered part of our logical extension to our court staff. Extending key services applications and access to data that was yesterday reserved only for internal employees. Let's take a look at how today's solutions are falling short to respond to the changes that we've started discussing. As part of our business, we, we interact with a lot of security leaders, senior leaders for the enterprises. When I talk to cybersecurity leaders, I definitely see there is a strong focus towards cyber security and their cyber ecosystem is strengthening. When I talk to risk leaders, I see their risk program maturing. When I talk to IM leaders, I see they are confident about the, how, what they are doing in IM. But what worries me is these functions don't naturally integrate and communicate effectively, which leads to decision making in silos without having a complete context of the problem in hand. For example, it's a recent example with one of our customers where IT infrastructure team decided to migrate from Exchange to O365. They launched the pilot and then, they, then the information security team came to know about it. No cloud security assessment. This is a true reflection of how fragmented our cyber defense ecosystem is. And that's the that's the reality. And that's why we see why breaches are increasing, even if we are spending so much money into this. I think what you're saying is that even though individual silo components are maturing and we're making in, uh, advances, because these technologies are integrated with each other, they're fundamentally limited and therefore will never recognize the full capability of the individual product. Yes. Let's look at the cyber risk cyber security, cyber risk landscape. There are multitude of point solutions available for different organization functions to choose from depending on what problems they are trying to solve. In reality, majority of the cyber security budget is spent on buying very pointed, focused cyber security defense solutions. And if you look at the problems, why this happens is, is the rigor that team comes across that they are, they are very passionate about one attack vector and they just want to solve that. And in the real brief scenario or incident investigations, we all see different teams manually try to tie the data together by talking to them, talking to each other in a, in a spreadsheet format which creates serious maze of confusion around cyber defense ecosystem when you really want to get to a root cause of any incident that has happened. I look at the problem as tri-factor. Expanding attack surface, disconnected cyber ecosystem, organization silos. The big problem with siloed solutioning and technologies is that they fall short responding and against emerging threats. By working in a silo, we are fundamentally stretching our resources thin and preventing the ability for coworkers to share inf information, key information during an incident response as, and preventing that natural collaboration. Additionally, the stress levels and the limited resource availability of team members trying to solve problems without the information necessary to execute a plan. I think we're saying largely the same thing, Sabia, yeah. which is a defense in depth approach is largely a siloed philosophy. Yeah. Let's reflect with some data points. Despite spending $130 billion so far this year on cybersecurity, 
3,800 breaches have resulted in compromising 4.1 billion identities. Every time I look at these numbers, my mind blows. I, I, my head spins. How can we, despite spending 130 billion, that's billion with the B, still have thousands of breaches? On a serious note, these, these are the breaches who only reached press. We have too many other breaches which has not reached to the press. And when we reflect on cybersecurity spending, majority is, is going into appointed different solutions. And we, we have reflected on, irrespective of identity being the major cause of high profile breaches. Yeah, I mean, security leaders talk about digital transformation and embrace new modes of business and go to market plans, understanding that every time we expand, we increase our attack service. Cybersecurity leaders are also notorious for not adjusting and adapting strategize finding new strategies to address these breach, these uh, new threats that come with expanding our business. We have an example that we'd like to share. We'll just quickly reflect on a modern day attack scenario where a bad actor is trying to exfiltrate sensitive data from their organization. And you have a, this example organization have all the key functions already established products are implemented. But when we look at, even if DLP intercepts that it is a sensitive data being transmitted, it has no understanding of the real identity context about the user who is trying to exfiltrate the data, who he is and why he has access to. So it may block that, but it might become a false positive, which is a big issue with DLP implementation. If you look at SOC, if SOC identifies it as an abnormal behavior, but at the same time, the, it is not empowered to take action because it doesn't have true context about who the identity is and what the asset is, what is the criticality of the asset and, and what data the asset is holding. And, and if you look at IAM, IAM is not even in the forefront of cyber defense ecosystem in today's world. All of these different functions and technologies are producing relevant data to be leveraged, but they are implemented in silos. And with siloed implementation, no one of these security controls have the complete context to take real-time actions. And that's the challenge. That's, that boils down to team chemistry. You can look at cyber ecosystem as a team chemistry. You can't build a winning team just by getting all A players from different, different teams. It's just not possible. Our inability to have holistic, real-time holistic data available actually helps attacker to bypass your security control through lateral movement and succeed in the breach. My friends here at Mass Mutual will tell you that I'm a guy that likes to focus on the solve. And being that guy focused on the solution, I'm not prepared to accept that this is the best that we can do. So, Sabi, I'm hoping you can tell us how we can do better. Yeah, let's, let's look at the problem in a holistic way. And the solution is, is not revolving around technology. Solution is revolving around our mindset and approach that we take. The data are telling us that eventually a bad actor will bypass traditional, meaning yesterday's network perimeter security. Yeah, if, when I look at the problem and its fundamental sources from a risk perspective, what we need for an organization to function, identities needs access to the data to perform their job. Assets are the facilitator of the data. Organization policy, situation, and emerging threat landscape actually defines what's normal versus abnormal for an organization. I look at identity and assets are two parts of the puzzle. And risk is the context that really binds them together and empower you with a complete set of information.
Okay, so we're talking about risk context, but you haven't told us yet, how do we get it? Yeah, let's talk about it. In a typical organization, you have GRC function, you have data protection and privacy function, you have cyber security operation function, identity and access management. Your GRC and data protection systems have clear visibility into the policies which has been implemented, controls which has been implemented, and how they are performing on the ground through audits and, and different control mechanisms you have in place. Your cyber security ecosystem has clear visibility into all the threats and what's going on at the moment on identities on and on our critical assets. IAM system has clear visibility into who has access to what and why. We just need to create an integrated ecosystem to get the holistic risk context. The concept we are talking about is very simple and very gradual process. It is about consolidation, normalization and centralization of all relevant data around identities and assets to a globally accessible repository, which we call Breach Intelligence Data Lake. Yeah, I love this phraseology, data lake. Recently, I've started hearing a lot of technologies using the language, and I was a little confused until somebody taught me that a data lake is really the modern version of a data warehouse. I think cyber security data lake is like the perfect descriptor here. Yeah, you can define it the way you want to be. But Breach Intelligence Data Lake, built on a solid foundation of, of IAM, becomes the real vehicle for your cyber ecosystem from a risk context sharing perspective. Let's understand a, a true example that how it helps you. I'll go back to the previous example where a bad actor trying to exfiltrate the data. In that situation, with, avail with having access to the profile of the actor and, and why the whether the person has access to the data or not, and the criticality of the system which is holding the data, and the sensitivity of data, you have enough information. If you have if you gather this information real time and it's available at one go, then you have you can derive reliable intelligence. And with reliable intelligence only, you can define and take real time actions. Without a intelligence coming from machine, you cannot rely unless you you start giving the machine the complete data. So and because we have the complete understanding of the risk level. The automation, we know what automation to, how to remediate Absolutely. the issue. Absolutely. Real-time visibility drives real-time action. This is, this is the very simple common sense we all do every day, day in and day out. Can we look at an example in detail? Yeah, let's look at the example. This attack chain looks a lot different than what we're used to. Here in the serial process, we see that the break-in occurs. And when the, the uh, crypt, uh, compromised account begins to access the protected asset, monitoring identifies that, moving us forward to moving us forward to detect whether it's DLP or the SIM that find, uh, the access gateway that detects the anomalous behavior, it updates the risk context for the user and the asset. With the risk context updated, like we were just saying, now the uh, response, we understand what the correct automated response is to address the specific risk, the specific transaction. Leaving us in, in a world where man, that's managed and protected. Thanks, Steve. The key in this example, I just want to highlight that. Real-time risk context sharing happens as soon as a high-risk transaction access transaction is detected. And I am, we all understand, is the vehicle. I am being the vehicle for access transaction and having access to risk context. It is empowered to, to actually make informed decision. And if needed, take real-time remediation action. Like in this case, I am just stopped the transaction in the, in the midst of 
the person trying to exfiltrate the data. That's the, and, and not only this, at the same time, risk context is being shared with, with different cybersecurity ecosystems, like your incident response team, gets the access to the risk context. And what happened? They can really do analysis and define future corrective and preventive measures. I feel like there's an aha statement coming in here. Yep, you can, you all can think, think about it. Access is not unlimited. There is a finite set of communication path between identities, assets, and data together. If we take a very simple mindset change and approach to defend your organization by taking identity-centric approach, then you can really build a resilient site organization from a cyber security perspective. That's the very right. simple message we, we wanted to drive. I was right. Aha! As we move forward to talk about how do we recognize identity-centric security in each of our organizations, we don't need to talk here about maturing identity and directory services and identity consolidation because you guys are already familiar with that, right? What we do, what I do want to stress is the importance of accepting, actually more than accepting, embracing that identity is and needs to be the perimeter. Once we've accepted that identity, meaning the person is the perimeter, it's a matter of consolidating, integrating as the, uh, da the data associated with governance, risk, and compliance, identity, security, to produce that risk context. I think we have just one minute left, so I will, I would like to conclude on this. So if you look at the blueprint, if we get to a identity context, at least a global accessible identity repository with identity and affiliation, you can truly start your journey towards integrating different cyber ecosystem together. Once you have integrated view, you have access to reliable and contextual information to derive reliable intelligence. And when you do that, you will eventually start trusting the intelligence coming out of machine. When you start trusting the intelligence coming out of machine, you can truly leverage power of automation to define breach defense orchestration. That's the key. What we are simply talking about is this journey is about taking a holistic approach and, and maximizing your investment that you have made in your cyber ecosystem. In now, the, yeah. who wants to buy some Amway? Questions? I'll just, so we talked about the overall uh, approach in a technology agnostic way. But I would like to mention, we have a cyber risk management platform, TrueOps, which really helps you integrate with different cyber ecosystems together and, and, and becomes the vehicle for risk context sharing across different cyber ecosystems. We are here for any questions or any comments you have and we are, thank you.